Let's talk about the C-spot orgasm. This is kind of one of those hidden little gems of your sexual experiences. But I don't want to hide it from you, boo. I want you to try it. So let's do this right. So what exactly is this C-spot orgasm that I'm talking about? Because nine times out of 10, when we're talking about an orgasm that starts with a C, we are talking about the clitoral orgasm. However, friend, that is not what we are talking about today. Today, we are gonna be talking about the cervical orgasm. But obviously, before we even get started, we have to know what the cervix is and how to find it because we are not gonna be having these magical explosions without knowing how to locate the target. Am I right? I want you to think of the cervix of this magical button all the way at the end of the vaginal canal. This baby is absolutely crucial for reproductive health. However, that kind of means that it's been a little bit forgotten about when it comes to physical intimacy. And just to make sure that you guys understand what I'm saying, I am gonna link a picture right up here so you guys know what I am talking about. Cervical orgasms actually happen when the area is stimulated during deep penetration. But it's not all about those deep strokes and those deep pokes. The killer actually lies in well-executed cervical stimulation during intercourse. Now, if you're a vulva owner watching this, chances are you have experienced some form of cervical cramping or discomfort or pain during penetrative sex before. Nine times out of 10, this is happening in deep, deep, deep doggy where you're gripping the sheets and it's not for the right reasons but as we get better at vocalizing and communicating we can actually tell our partner to stop slamming us out and i'm not going to sugarcoat it it took me a long time to be able to vocalize my wants and my needs and my desires during sex so if you're not there yet that's my job my job is to get you there baby because you are your own advocate for your pleasure so if you haven't done so already what are you waiting for like and subscribe so that you never miss a video revolving around your pleasure and how to provide your partner the pleasure that they want. But I think the real question that you have for me is, Miranda, why would I want a cervical orgasm when I could get that clitoral orgasm in the span of three minutes? It's quick, it's done, it's easy, and it's fast, and it's the most effective for majority of vulva owners. However, baby, you just said it right there because the cervical orgasm is a very far cry away from that clitoral. Specifically because the cervical orgasm is more local and immediate. It usually comes in really hot, really fast, and hits you right in the face with pow, pow! It's a Catalina wine mixer right away. But the thing is, you didn't even get to enjoy that party fully. Imagine if you could go to that party, you could have your drinks, you could mingle with the best people, you can leave feeling so, so, so good and so fulfilled and just vibrating full of that good, good. I don't know why I just acted like y'all were attending the Catalina wine mixer and that's why we get the cervical orgasms or why we want them, but I mean, we're gonna run with it. Now, obviously, when it comes to experiencing different types of orgasms, it's all gonna be subjective. However, roughly, it's gonna be same, same, but different. So for me, the cervical orgasm feels like a really, really deep, deep, intense sensation that starts in the pelvis, works its way up into the abdomen, and just waves through your body. That is the only way that I can explain it. It's like wave after wave after wave. Is it like a tsunami? Those waves eventually take over your whole body. These are the ones that have you sheet gripping and just shaking. So when you think a cervical orgasm, think of tsunami or think about those deeper more expansive waves well I'm gonna be real with you guys just like I always am achieving this type of orgasm does require some slow consistent deep penetration to the cervix obviously now I know you guys might think that that seems very very easy however it does involve a very powerful trifecta of ingredients such as emotional connection, relaxation, and obviously a physical skill. Because the more aroused you become, the more comfortable you are with yourself and with your partner, the more receptive your cervix is gonna be to receiving that type of pleasure. So the first step is to understand your body and know where your own cervix is. 
So this is kind of one of my pro tips to when you are going to be trying something new as far as different types of orgasms. And nine times out of 10, it's about exploring yourself before you bring it into the bedroom with your partner. And also my pro tip that carries through all of my YouTube videos is we are going to what? We are going to lube up first. Because baby, we are gonna take some you time, whether that be self pleasure or maybe even just a vaginal massage. So nine times out of 10, when we are discovering our own body or mapping it out, I like to recommend using our fingers. However, in this case, your digits might just not be long enough to reach your cervix. And that's totally fine. Feel free to use a dildo or a wand as well. Now the goal here in palpating and finding your cervix isn't about having that cervical orgasm, but getting to know your body and what it feels good when you are giving it that deep kind of stimulation. So you're gonna be playing around with the angle, the depth, and the pace. Now, if you feel like you are having a hard time locating your cervix, feel free to switch up your position. A couple of the positions that might make it easier is actually a squatting position, laying on your back with your knees apart, or if you are somebody who uses a menstrual cup or a menstrual disc, you could also reach in the same way how you would either take out or insert each product. But how deep is your cervix? It really ranges from person to person, but it does stay within the three to seven inches. If you are still having an issue palpating your cervix, wait until the time of the month, your moon cycle or your period. Specifically because when you are on your period, your cervix actually lowers. It becomes firm and very much so closed. And when you are ovulating, it raises up, becomes higher, softer, and it opens a little bit more to allow the potential for reproduction or essentially to prepare for conception. Now, what exactly are we feeling for here? Because sometimes it can just feel like a space gate or like Hermione Granger's purse, the bag of never ending tricks. Because honestly, she can still be a mystery to me sometimes the things that you can fit in there. But what exactly are we feeling for? Honestly, my first time feeling my cervix was taught to me by my gynecologist and she said something that was a complete game changer and it was to feel for the end of your nose. This is round, this is firm, and it has a dimple, specifically because our cervix kind of looks like a donut. So like I had just said, it changes during the phases of your cycle. It doesn't just go up and down, but it can also tilt backwards and forwards depending on which way your uterus is facing. Because in some cases, like myself, you can have a retroverted uterus, which is gonna change the angle of your cervix, and that can allow you to do some positions during sex and actually cause an extreme amount of pain during other positions in sex. Now my second tip for you is to create an environment that you feel safe in. So I want you to feel relaxed. I want you to feel like you can trust and express to your partner your wants, your needs, and your desires. And you can tell them no, or you can tell them to stop and they will listen because when you feel safe within yourself and you feel safe with the person that you are being intimate with, everything is a hell of a lot better because safety essentially will help you create that relaxation. Now, if you have the safety and you are looking to relax, draw yourself a bath, maybe have a shower together or have a shower separately, drop into a meditation. Maybe it's turning up the heat in the room. Perhaps it's burning a candle or some incense. For me, relaxation is really coupled in with creating the mood or the vibe of the room. Now, the next component is communication and that is specifically because check-ins are absolutely essential. Check-ins don't stop once you have started having intercourse or any type of sexual act. Check-ins are always good to have throughout the whole session because this means that you care about your partner's pleasure and you care about your own pleasure. So by doing check-ins, we ensure that our partner is enjoying the experience just as much as we are. Now, I know we just talked about how your partner needs to be incredibly aroused, but I am telling you, foreplay is crucial, critical, however you wanna name it, it is essential for cervical orgasms. 
Yes, obviously it is essential for other types too, but especially this one. So whether that be oral, fingering, toys, bring out the toolkit, the toolbox, because baby, you are going to be playing. Stimulate those erogenous zones, take your time. If you are looking for a quick cervical orgasm, honey, that does not exist. So make sure you set aside at least an hour to play because this is about creating a mood, a vibe, and essentially a state of deep bliss and deep relaxation coupled with an orgasm. And you gotta really prioritize foreplay when you are wanting deep penetration and stimulation of the cervix. Now when it comes to actually penetrating, no, your cervix cannot be penetrated, but we are gonna be stimulating the external aspect of the cervix. So if you are the penetrator or the penetratee, you are going to be doing a gradual, gentle, penetration. So like I said, finger strap, toy, penis, whatever you choose, pick your poison. But you are going to go in gentle and gradually get deeper and deeper and deeper. Pay attention to the depth and the angle. Really talk to your partner. And can we just get a moment here to say this is a perfect time to add what? More lubrication. But I want you to be a very attentive and very patient because it may not happen right away and most likely it won't happen right away or every single time. But the focus shouldn't be on the orgasm itself, but it should be about the journey. Make sure you're respecting boundaries, comfort levels, and if your partner is experiencing any type of discomfort and wants you to stop or slow down or proceed with a different type of stimulation in a different area, Please respect that without question. Because truth is, some people find deep penetration too intense for pleasure. And this kind of tends to be a theme if somebody has an IUD. Because your IUD is hooked on to the other side of your cervix and you are hitting those strings with your C-O-C-K or your wand or your strap or your tool. But by no means does it have to be rough, rough, rough to experience this type of cervical bliss. Because let me tell you, forceful or aggressive or really, really intense penetration can lead to awful things. And it's not just the discomfort, but it's the cervical pain, the cramping. In some cases, there's even cervical bruising or even bleeding after sex. And to be honest, I don't know about you, but I have experienced in some rough, rough, rough BDSM sex. And sometimes I have had these things happen and it is no joke. It is super uncomfortable. And there are times where I look back at my past and think, damn, if only I would have vocalized, I could have expressed to my partner that I was feeling discomfort. At no point do you have to grip the sheets and champ it out. Do not be embarrassed. It is not embarrassed to speak your truth. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Because if we associate that with pleasure, with sex, the chances of us coming back around to that, to want to partake in sex or play or kink or cervical orgasms or any type of orgasms ever again are really, really slim. And that's when we run into issues of not wanting to have pleasure with our partner or even with ourselves. Oh, and I almost forgot. Let's talk about the positions for like two seconds. When we are doing a cervical stimulation, we are gonna want the vaginal canal facing down. So that is gonna be something like doggy or cowgirl. But you may need to experiment depending on the length of your vaginal canal because it really does depend on the depth of your cervix. All right, babies, I will see you next week for another video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. Cheers.